رسول الله محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator the sustainer the provider the cherisher the one who created us to worship him and i bear witness openly that there is no god worthy of our worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best of the creation of Allah we are sending our blessings and our salutation to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to his companions and also to the household of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our gathering allahumma amin ya rabbal alamin and as we get the the message about the six rights that we should fulfill as muslims inshallah that's a very rich topic that we are wa- we wanted to share with our communities the three communities but just let me welcome our imams uh, i have imam yahya had joined us i also can see our imam uh, imam jalal had joined us so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us allahumma amin assalamu alaykum imam muhammad alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Welcome our Imams. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhana, Shaykh Jalal. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya marhaba, ya marhaba, Shaykhana. Ya marhaba. May Allah bless all of you. And may Allah bless the brothers and sisters who are watching us right now, even on Zoom, in Facebook page. I just wanted to give a little introduction about the topic that we wanted to share tonight with each and every one. It's really very important to know our rights and our responsibilities towards each other. As we are living in one community, as one ummah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had described this ummah, when he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Surely your ummah considered like one united body means one ummah, means we are living a, a amongst each other, and we try to deal with one another on that basis, the basis of Islam. And we understand that all Muslims, the brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Hujurat, surely the believers are brothers. And when we talk here about the brothers, that does not mean only that the gender Allah is talking only about the males, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the females and the males as well. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to understand that we are brothers and sisters living under the umbrella of Islam, regardless of our ethnicities, regardless of our, uh, uh, our dark, our skin, whether it's dark, whether it's white, regardless of our mother tongue, regardless of our nationalities, but we have lots of things in common. We have Islam, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we cannot revive our Ummah back without reviving this concept in our minds. The concept that we are one Ummah, that we are one united body, that we are brothers and sisters under the, the great umbrella, which is the Islam. And subhanallah rabbil alameen, when you, when you think about this concept that we are one ummah, you should reach to the, the conclusion that we have some rights upon one another so we can deal with one another under these laws, under these rights, fulfilling the rights of Islam. And tonight, inshallah, we wanted to share with you the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith is authentic hadith, is narrated by uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, the great companion Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. And I will just, before we listen to our imams, I will give you a little hint of the hadith 
And also the narrator of this hadith, Sayyiduna Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. And of course, you have heard this name before, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. So who is Abu Hurairah? Abu Hurairah is Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhrin al-Dusi. Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, the man who was originally from Yemen, and he was born 21 years before the Hijrah, before the migration from Mecca to Medina. And he passed away at the year 59 Hijri, means that he lived till he reached to the age of 80. Some of the other books said 77, but anyhow, he was the person who, who got the honor and the pleasure of being the company in the company of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for almost four years. And those four years, yes, they are very short period, but yet he gave us lots of the hadith that he narrated from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till he got this title that he was the most companion who narrated the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Actually, he narrated almost 5,374 hadith. So can you imagine this number? One person narrated all these ahadith, almost 5,000 and a half ahadith. He narrated by himself from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith that we have tonight is one of those 5,374 hadith. And Sayyiduna Abu Rayyarata radiallahu an, also he, he taught the hadith to hundreds of the followers and the companions who came even after the followers who came after the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And those who got the hadith from Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, their number as Imam al-Bukhari had mentioned had reached to 800 students. And masha'Allah, he transmitted the hadith and conveyed the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also taken and consider in your mind that Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, had entitled him to, had assigned him to be the governor of al-Bahrain that we have right now, the, the country al-Bahrain. And also he became a governor all over al-Madina, al-Madina city that it has the masjid of Rasulullah and the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Till the, the year 41 Hijri, then he took his time after that to teach the hadith and to give the fatwa in al-Madina till he died at the year 59 Hijri. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower him with his mercy. And tonight we gather together so we can learn from the hadith was narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. So let me go swiftly to the hadith. The hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah, as I mentioned, it's mentioned in or narrated by Imam Muslim in his collection, the authentic hadith of Imam Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had started this hadith by this statement when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, Haqqul muslimi ala al-muslimi sit, the rights of the Muslim upon his other brother or the, the Muslim, the other Muslim are six. So he has six rights. So me as a Muslim, I have six rights upon you. That means you have to fulfill six rights for me. And also I have to fulfill the same six rights to other Muslims. So we have to, to take in consideration that these are mutual rights that each and every Muslim should fulfill. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Haqqul Muslim, that means you must do it if you are under if you are under certain circumstances but at least we could say you should do these rights and take it in your mind in your consideration that your brother in islam has rights over you so we need to know 
these rights. Our Imams, uh, uh, tonight, inshallah, they will tell us more about these rights. I will start with our Imam, Imam Jalal, the Imam of Masjid al-Rahman in Tarpon Spring, and he will give us the first right. But please, I just wanted you to take some notes, if you want, to memorize. And as usual, alhamdulillah, we have our presentation, our slides. We are going to share it with you while our Imams are giving us these teachings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the benefits from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, our Imam, back to you. What is the first right that we should fulfill? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا my dear respected brothers and sisters my dear respected two imams may Allah bless you all of you amin ya rabbil alamin again we meet الحمد لله رب العالمين one more time and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى makes you know this beautiful and wonderful meeting in all of our deeds in all in your deeds inshallah rabbil alamin and may allah accept your good deed and your good actions amin ya rabbil alamin this is wonderful hadith from the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace and blessing be upon him alayhi salatu wasalam the first right you know if you see your brother the muslim or the sister if you see him you greet him with salam you greet him with the peace. You say to him, peace be upon you. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us and advised us. You know, part of it that when you smile, you know, when you say to your brother or your sister in Islam, even not inside the masjid, maybe even outside the masjid. And what this makes me really sometimes sad, not intentionally, some of our brothers, they see in each other inside the masjid, not in the Jum'ah, while, you know, the, the Imam, you know, the, he is in the member and say the Jum'ah and, you know, and say the, this, the khutbah in the Jum'ah, we cannot speak, we cannot say Salaamu Alaikum at this time. But any other time, even after, especially after the, uh, after the Jum'ah, after the Jum'ah first, after the Jum'ah is done, you should look at your right and look at your left and you say to them, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Imam Ahmed Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, my brother. My name is Imam Muhammad Yahya. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and my sisters. My name is Imam Jalal Abdul Wahid. This is the way it's supposed to be. When we spirit the salam, when we spirit the peace be upon you, Peace bring the, the love, you know. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you will not enter the Jannah until you <clears throat> have the, uh, you love each other. Until you be believers first, and you will not be believers until, you know, unless you, be, you, you, have, the, you have the love for each other. Should I tell you, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now, he guides us and he gives us even the, the prescription. He gives us what we should say. Should I tell you about something? If you do it, you're going to be among, among who? Among the people who enter the Jannah. What we should do, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessing be upon you. He said, Afshur Salam, spirit the peace. Just when you see your brother, you say to him, peace be upon you. This is meaning, it's not only hi, bye. No, it's meaning, how are you, my brother? Peace be upon you, meaning, meaning how are you doing today? How is your family? Do you need anything? I am here for you. It brings the care. It brings the love between each other, between Muslims, between Muslims. Do you respect the sisters? You know, when you are in a mall or you are in a shopping center or in a supermarket or in Walmart, anywhere, and you see your sister that she wear hijab, that's meaning that she is a Muslim. Automatic, she is a Muslim because she wears scarf, she wear hijab, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Go ahead and say to her, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. You know, this will not hurt in, in Marafat, this will bring love and care. You know, maybe you know each other. Maybe my brothers, you know, you see, you see each other in one time in a masjid. 
So say to each other, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Unfortunately, and again, it's not intentionally, of course. But sometimes like, we will just look to each other and just like look at the other side. Why sometimes we do that? May Allah bless you, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Why we do that? Are we shy to be Muslims and to say in front of everyone else, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, they will say, oh, they are Muslims? So what? Of course. Of course, I'm a Muslim. Are we something else? None, are we not Muslims? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen, how in bounty from Allah Azza wa Jal that you are Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. You know, like the, uh, our brother, Sheikh Ahmad, may Allah bless him. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, it, 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 in matter of fact, or in fact, that Allah Azza wa Jal said, indeed, the believers is brothers. Brothers is meaning in Islam, brothers and sisters. So we need to keep this warm. We need to keep to keep this care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear respected brothers and sisters, you know, in inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, in Jannah, all of you, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, and all Muslim ummah, all the Muslims ummah will be inside the Jannah. The greeting inside the Jannah is assalam. Tahiyyatuhum fiha salam. You know, the greeting on, you know, at this time is salam, is peace. So peace be upon you. Peace be upon you, my dear respected both imams. Peace be upon you, all everybody here. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. And I am witness upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I love you for the sake of Allah. Azza wa Jal. May Allah bless you and bless all this gathering and bless all Muslim ummah. Ameen, Rabbil Ameen. I back to you, my respected Imam Ahmed. May Allah bless you. Allah khairan, Shaykhana. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for this wonderful uh, advice. Surely we need to revive the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by spreading salam everywhere, not only in the masajid. That's a very valid point that we should pay attention to. So let me go back to the second point. What is the second point? This is what our Imam, Imam Yahya, is going to tell us tonight, inshallah. Yes, our Imam. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I start like always by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything he has given us. And we show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who gave us the ability and the one who facilitated the way to gather us now here online everybody at their home everybody at their wh wh wherever we are we have the uh, we have an access to see each other and spend a nice time remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talking a little about the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, tonight alhamdulillah we have an incredible hadith very unique hadith something that we if we do in our life our life and our and everything will be completely changed to the best, inshallah. Here the Prophet ﷺ tells us of six points and six advices. If we keep doing them, if we keep fulfilling those six points, our Iman will be on the top level, inshallah. Usually when we talk about those things that we do like day-to-day -day life, Actually, I try my best to transfer our habits into an act of worship. In our religion, something that is unique that we have a, a like we have a luxury and we have a choice to, to change and to transfer all of our day-to-day -day actions into acts of worship. I think uh, I mentioned it before in Khutbat al Jumu'ah that, for example, when someone does a favor to you, you say automatically, all of us say thank you. We say shukran, we say thank you, we say jazakallahu khayran. But in our religion, we could gain a, a, a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hasanat for this word. How the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, man lam yashkurun nas, la yashkurullah. Whoever is not thankful, is not uh, uh, thankful to the people, he is not grateful to Allah. So whenever you do something, whenever you go somewhere, whenever even you utter one word, remember and recall the, the prophet sayings that whenever you say something good, we have like a facility and we have an access to transfer all these actions into acts of worship. Like to smile to your brother, the prophet says that giving a smile to 
uh, each other is a kind of a charity and so on and so forth. I'm saying this because the second point and the second advice in this hadith is really important. Alhamdulillah, all of us do it. يَقُلُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَقُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ سِتْ وكما تكلم فضيلة الشيخ جلال عن, عن النقطة الأولى وهي إذا لقيته فسلم عليه النقطة الثانية وإذا دعاك فأجبه So number two if he invites you then respond to him go to him answer his invitation we might feel there's something, it's not a big deal. You know, people offer food, and alhamdulillah, here in Masjid al-Salam specifically, alhamdulillah, from every now and then, they offer food for a celebration, for a festival, for Ramadan, iftar, and alhamdulillah, and all of our masajid. But the point here is to have this intention that you are doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and responding positively to the hadith of Rasulullah when he says if someone invites you invites you to walima, invites you to food invites you even to coffee respond to him, go with him go to him because this action makes him happy makes him feel comfortable and now you are exchanging the rewards he is getting the reward the one who invites you he's getting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything you do even if the food you give to your wife to your children Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a reward in return. It's a kind of charity. And when you go, you are responding to him positively. You are recalling this hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَإِذَا دَعَاكَ فَأَجِبْهُمْ Is there something that needs to be here in between six points and six rights? I'm saying rights. And the word right is, is, is a very uh, important word. Listen to this hadith. Just to get to the point how it is important to respond when someone calls you or when someone invites you to food or to anything which is halal. في الحديث أيضا سبحان الله هذا الحديث أيضا رواه سيدنا أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يرويه عن رب العزة قال الله تعالى يا عبدي أو يا ابن آدم إِسْتَطْعَمْتُكَ فَلَمْ تُطْعِمْنِي فَيَقُولْ يَا رَبْ كَيْفَ أُطْعِمُكَ وَأَنْتَ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ فيقول الله تعالى أما علمت أن عبدي فلان استطعمك فلم تطعمه أما علمت أنك لو استطعمت لو أطعمته لوجدتني لو عنده أو في رواية لوجدت لو ذلك عنده So now in this hadith look how our religion tries to, to catch every chance and every opportunity to bring peace, solidarity, cohesiveness, cooperation amongst our communities. The Prophet Sallallahu tells about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this hadith that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the Day of Judgment will bring this, one of us and say Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, O son of Adam, I asked you for food and you didn't feed me. And then the slave will say, O, o Lord, Oh my Lord, how could I feed you while you are the Lord of the world, the Lord of the universe? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, don't you know that my slave so-and-so asked you for food and you didn't feed him? Don't you know that if you had fed them, you would have found me by him? And in another narration, you would have found that with me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged us and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells and motivating us that we should try our best to feed the people. It's not something that we just be busy about in the month of Ramadan kind of iftar and that's it. No, it's something that we have to keep, you know, doing as much as we can the whole year. Once we find a chance, we should be aware of what's going on around us. If someone needs food and this is and the Prophet وسلم, tells in another hadith that the best thing that you could give to people is to feed them. Because as humans, we need food every day. And subhanAllah, we have people, maybe they are not very close to us, maybe they are not even in our communities, but still, there are some people really, they are starving. So whenever you get a chance, whenever you get an access to people who needs food, rush to this. 
and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this action and know that it is like a, a mutual act when somebody inv uh, uh, invites you to eat he is getting the reward and you are also getting the reward because you are responding positively so now we have two hadiths actually one hadith encouraged us to spread and to feed the people and the other hadith encouraged us to go and eat if somebody invites us look how our religion is very tolerant and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a reward for everything. You might think, uh, look at it like, we, we, we don't have to make it a big deal. I will go and eat because I'm hungry and I'll be full and that's it. Yes, go and eat and enjoy your time. But don't forget to recall this hadith that I am going to my brother when he invites me because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded me and advised me in this hadith that whenever your brother invites you to food, to walima or so, then go and make him happy and participate and share a good time and share the advice and share, and share the food. And also be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a reward even if you are enjoying the food, you still you get the reward because of your intention. I don't like to make it so long, but actually this is something unique in our religion that you could transfer all our day-to-day -day actions, our habits into acts of worship that you eat enjoy the best food, the drinks, and then you gain the reward because you responded positively to the Prophet's advice as mentioned in this hadith. Yes, Jazakallah khair. Barakallah feekum, Shaykhana. And really we have learned something very important tonight that the, the concept of brotherhood in Islam is wider than what we think. And we, we, we just call ourselves in the masjid Yes, brother, assalamu alaikum, brother. This is sister, so and so. And we think it is just like titles, but the the it is the, the concept of the brotherhood is wider than this, larger than this. So the first point is to greet one another with salam. Number two, whenever you get the invitation from your brother or your sister in Islam, accept the invitation and you will be rewarded. And number three, I just wanted to tell you, it, it, it talks about the nasiha, the advice. Whenever your brother or your sister in Islam asks you for advice, give them the sincere one. Give them the advice that you wish if it was for you, that you hope that somebody will give you if you were at the same attitude, if you were at the same situation, you wish or, or you hope that they will give you a sincere advice. So whenever your brother in Islam came to ask you, Salam Alaikum brother, you know what? I'm thinking of starting a, a business transaction. So what do you think about this? What do you think about, you know, buying a house right now in these days? What do you think about buying this car? So you will give him the sincere advice. And of course, of course, we have lots of, educates we need to learn when it comes to the advice. In Islam, we should give the advice in a very gentle and kind way. And number two, give the advice in private as much as you can. So, so do not give the advice in public, as they said in Arabic uh, 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 verb or in, in the Arabic example, when you give the advice, give it on private. And nasiha ala al mala fadiha. In that's the giving the advice in public, that's a scandal by itself. You are putting him in a shame position, shameful position. And also, you make him very, you know, uh, humiliated when you give him the advice in public. So when you see your brother, when you see your sister had did something wrong, had done something wrong, when you give that, you know, uh, uh, to somebody, you try to make him worse. You make, you try to make him look bad. When you give the advice, give the advice with a good way. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal al hasana. Call to the way of your Lord with the wisdom and the good approach. And if you remember, 
when we give the lectures before in the masjid, we said, you should seek the, the, the valid and the most you know, proper time and the most proper way to transfer the advice. So do not come somebody in, in a very angry mood and you tell him, you know what? I wanna give you advice. No, that's not the time, wait. And when you give the, the advice, give it with great smile, give it with sincere heart that you are looking for the interest of your brother. That is something we need to follow. So, so the advice number three or the right number three, whenever he seeks advice, whenever your brother, your sister in Islam are seeking advice, give that advice with a sincere intention. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this ni'mah, Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Still, we have like three other uh, uh, rights. I can see, mashallah, our Imam, our Imam Yahya is giving me the nasiha, and it's kind of, he is practicing the hadith here. I have to submit, I have to obey uh, uh, Imam because he is thinking of, you know, postponing the other three rights to the next time. So we should have our time to explain more and more to our brothers and sisters. So what do you think our Imam, Imam Jalal? You think we can say no to Imam Muhammad Yahya? <laughs> we, we cannot do that. <laughs> MashaAllah, Allahu Akbar. You see, that's, that's, that's how the Imams are cooperating with one another, MashaAllah. So just let me summarize them. So the first one, to say assalamu alaikum, to exchange the greetings of a salam, and that's spreading peace amongst the community members. And number two, when you get the invitation, accept it with a good intention and you will be rewarded. Number three, when he seeks the advice, give it with a sincere heart, with a sincere intention. Imam Jalal, with these three rights, what do you think about our ummah right now? What should we do to fulfill all these three rights, inshallah? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessing be upon him, he advised us and he encouraged us and he said, do not forget that this is the rights. When, when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa you know, now we, we seek our rights. You know, this is my right upon you and your rights upon me. You know, so this is not, this is not choice. We have to, because this is the rights, you know, everybody look for his rights. Even our rights with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has a right upon us and we have, we have a right upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tried to bring or to gather us together. Try to, to, to put the, the peace, you know, to everyone. Try to have the care to the whole ummah because we are brothers and sisters. We are. So this is great opportunity for all of us to do it. You know, uh, I didn't want to say intentionally, but of course, and you know, not intentionally, subhanAllah al when we see each other, this is three things really bring us together. When, when Sheikh Muhammad Yahya, may Allah bless him, when he talks ab about some, if your brother, you know, say to you, come for some coffee even, or some, some, some food, go there. We will not talk about, we will, we will not go only for food. We will talk, we will share our life. You know, we will bring our families together. So it is just to be that, to, to make the harmony with the people. Everybody gather together. We will talk about business. We will talk about the religion. We will talk about everything. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. So it's not only food. It's not only high buy. No, it is the advice from the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as it is wajib, as it is like this is this is our commitment. This is this is supposed to be. We we have to do it. Why? Because the Prophet Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this is our right upon each us as a Muslim Ummah. May Allah bless you. Amin ya Rabbil Alamin. Jazakum Allah khairan Shaykhana. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala bless you. Allah Amin ya Rabbil Alamin. And 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 really we have enjoyed the first three rights. 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those the rights in front of you, everyone on the slides. So inshallah, the first three that we have talked about, inshallah, next time we will talk more and more in details about the other three, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khairan. And before, inshallah, we wrap up our lecture and we will conclude as usual with the dua. And of course, we have our brother, brother Muizuddin, inshallah, Imam Jalal, he is asking a special request to include him in our dua, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua for Allah to facilitate his affairs and to finish his paperwork with the immigration, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. And the man is feeling so optimistic. Last time when we made the dua for him, alhamdulillah, he got good step forward and he's looking for our duas, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Also for the brothers and sisters who are joining us, mashallah, I can see all the, the good names and alhamdulillah, all the brothers and sisters here. We mentioned some of them. I can tell you that brother Sharik, mashallah, our brother had joined us. Uh, Auntie Maryam, Dr. Siddiqui, Sister Khadija, brother Fazal Hadi, uh, uh, Imtiaz Khan, Muhammad Nasruddin, and Sister Azima, Sister Hala, uh, uh, Mirza Beg. Uh, uh, brother Zaf Zabar, Sundus Ali, Rahma Ali, Brother Khadr Hussain, Hassan Khan, long time without seeing him, but Alhamdulillah that he is finally had joined us. May Allah bless him. Uh, brother Mutia also, MashaAllah, uh, had joined us. Dean Ibrahim, uh, uh, Mu'izzuddin, of course, Brother Abdul Basit, Sister Samana, Shaliza Deen, uh, Juan. Uh, MashaAllah, lots of the names. My wife also had joined the session. Sister Aisha Hadi, uh, uh, Roles, uh, Sister Melinda. Uh, MashaAllah, lots of the brothers and sisters had joined us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. Allahumma ameen. And I think also Muhammad Ali, uh, my son is watching and he's you know writing notes uh, because I promised him to, to give him ice cream. Uh, so may inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So our imams, do you want to take ice cream too? What do you think about this offer? Wallahi, I'm going to say to you just right now. I said to you, how about us? <laughs> we and Imam Muhammad here. Yeah, you know what? You know what? This offer. is something really important because you are inviting <laughs> yes. us now and we shall yeah. respond. But we there is something also I want, to, I want to remember really quick. I want to say really quick. If you can't, accept the invitation for some reason, like me, for example, my teeth is so sensitive for the cold yeah. stuff. That's yeah. why I, I will say, uh, I will just apologize for it. And, and instead of that, I can, I can zill you, you know, something so you can get what you want. Yeah, this is acceptable all the time. May <laughs> 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 Allah bless you, Allah Mameen. Imam, now we came to the dua part. We want to include, inshallah, brother Mu'izzuddin, and each and every one in your dua, inshallah, we will say Ameen. Inshallah, Rabbil Ameen. And we make also dua for our brother Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah, because he did the surgery today, inshallah, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a quick recovery, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We seek his help and, and, and we seek his forgiveness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a better believers, a better Muslims. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide us. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to have a mercy upon us. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to give us the good deed and to cure our hearts and to guide us to the straight path to the Jannah, to be with the Prophet of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to drink, to feed us from the Jannah. And we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to gather us together with the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we drink from the Al-Kawthar, from the river of Al-Kawthar in, in the Jannah. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cure our hearts and to cure everyone sick, cure everyone he lay down on his bed. No one knows how he suffer except for Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to put the mercy upon all Muslim Ummah and to spirit the, the peace and the love we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us closer to him. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to accept the good deed and to guide us to make the good deed for the all Muslims ummah. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to, to, to have the 
tranquility in our life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the tranquility to our wives and to our kids and to our family. We ask Allah azza wa jal to feel the pain of each other and to cure each other. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to guide us and to make us a better believers, better Muslim. We ask Allah azza wa jal to bring the good deed in our life and in our way and to have the opportunity of this good deed to be closer to Allah azza wa jal. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina. Allahumma aslih ahwalana. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdimina. Ja'alna sababan liman ihtada. اللهم جعلنا قريبين منك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم هب لنا عملا طيبا يقربنا إليك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اجعلنا مسلمين حقا مسلمين حقا مؤمنين اللهم اجعلنا يا ربي اللهم اكرم المسلمين والمسلمات الأحاء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا أرحم الراحمين اشف يا رب مرضانا ارحم يا رب موتانا اهدنا يا رب واهدي بنا اجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اجعلنا يا رب ممن يكونون دائما وأبدا شاكرين اختم لنا بالصالحات الباقيات أعمالنا يا أعمالنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا رب العالمين لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا وفرته يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا أسلم بارك الله فيكم شيخنا من الله سبحانه وتعالى بلس يو اللهم امين فور ذيس بيوتيفول دعاء يا رب العالمين وي كان سي ما شاء الله برادر بلال ابو بكر اند اور برادر خالد عزت ما شاء الله از واتشينج اس اون فيسبوك سو مي الله سبحانه وتعالى ان اور دعاز اولسو فور اول اوف ذيم مي الله سبحانه وتعالى بلس ذيم بلس ذير فاميلي ممبرز اللهم امين Finally, I just wanted to say Jazakumullah uh, khairan our Imams, Imam Muhammad Yahya, the Imam of Masjid al-Salam in Dunedin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, our Imam. And uh, bro, by the way, uh, Brother Fazal said there is warm uh, ice cream. So still you have the opportunity to get the ice cream. MashaAllah, that's good. MashaAllah. <laughs> Jazakumullah <laughs> khairan our Imam, Imam Jalal, uh, the Imam of Masjid al-Rahman in Tarburn Spring. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Allahumma ameen. Inshallah, see you, see you very soon, inshallah. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah.